right, section 4.4, we're going to continue with bases raised to powers, and we'll have some logarithm stuff thrown in here. So we'll kind of um, expand on what we did in 4.3. So let's look at the first problem. So the first problem is 9 raised to the 2x minus 12 equals 6,561. So we're going to use this property. If you have a base raised to some power m, and that's equal to the same base raised to some power n, then m must equal n. So one way to get two numbers to match is if the bases are raised to the same power. So we're going to look at a problem like this, and we're going to say, okay, we want base 9. So if we can write 6561 as a base 9 number, then we can equate the two exponents. So let's look at the powers of 9. 9 to the 0 is 1. 9 to the 1st is 9. 9 squared is 81. 9 to the 3rd is 729. And 9 to the 4th power is 6561. So there we have it. We can rewrite the right-hand side as 9 raised to the 4th power. Now once we have that, we can say the only way these two can balance is if the exponent on the left equals the exponent on the right. So in essence, we can forget about the base 9 and just write 2x minus 12 must equal 4. Add both sides, 2x should equal 16. Divide both sides by 2, 1x equals 8. And that would be the answer for the first problem. Now based on this, we can do the second problem pretty quickly. If we have base 8 on the left, we want to write 64 as base 8 on the right. Well, 64 is just 8 squared. And once we have that, we can just equate these two exponents. And we would write 2x minus 2 equals 2. Add 2 to both sides. 2x should equal 4. Divide by 2. 1x equals 2. And you can check this, so if we plug 2 back in, we would get 8 to the 2 times 2 minus 2. This would be 8 to the 4 minus 2. This would be 8 squared. And we know that 8 squared is 64. So we're going to get the left balancing to the right. Okay, problem 39. It is um, maybe a little trickier. So what we have is we have powers. We're going to look for base 5. So let's do some base 5 math. So 5 to the 0 is 1. 5 to the 1 is 5. 5 squared is 25. 5 to the 3rd is 125. And 5 to the 4th is 625. So we're going to rewrite 625 as 5 to the 4th power. Now, this is also still to the x power. So all we've done is replace 625 with 5 to the 4th, but we have not done anything with that x yet. In fact, we're going to use this property here. If you have some x raised to some power a, and then you raise that to some power b, so power to a power, you multiply those two powers. So it's a times b. Okay, so this left side is really going to be 5 raised to the 4 times x, which is just 4x. Now the right side's a little trickier. So how do I get 1 over square root of 5? Well, first off, let's notice that if I go this other way, negative numbers, we start to get fractions. So 5 to the minus 1 is 1 over 5. 5 to the minus 2 is 1 over 25, etc. This one's pretty close. So notice We've got the 1 over, but that's over 5, and we want the square root of 5. So let's, let's write this. What is the square root of 5? The square root of 5 is really 5 to the 1 half power. 1 over the square root of 5 is really 5 to the negative 1 half power. Okay, so it's a fractional power. In fact, it's a negative fractional power. So this is going to be 5 to the minus 1 half and 5 to the minus 1 half here. And now we have it. The bases match, so I can just equate those exponents. So we're going to say 4x must equal negative 1 half. 
Now to get rid of that four, normally we would divide by four, but I'm gonna do this a little differently. I'm going to multiply by one fourth. So multiplying by one fourth and dividing by four are the same thing. But since we already have a fraction on the right, it's a little easier to see if you multiply by one fourth. And then to multiply fractions, we go straight across. On the left side, we get four over four. So this four will multiply into that one. Four over four X on the right side, we have the minus sign. One times one is one. Two times four is eight. Last thing to do is to cancel these two fours. So we have one X equals negative one over eight. And that would be the final answer for uh, 39. Actually, and you should try this in your calculator. Try to actually type in 625 power button parentheses minus one divided by eight, enter. Then try um, one divided by uh, the square root of five, enter. For both of these, you should get approximately this number, point four four seven two. So they end up being the same number which proves that our negative one over eight is correct. So I encourage you to try that with your calculator to make sure you know how to do those powers, especially negative fraction powers, a little trickier to plug in maybe. Okay, for 40, it's gonna be another base nine problem. So we're gonna have nine raised to the x plus one equals not 81 now, let's write that as nine squared, but that is still being raised to the x minus five. And I should probably put the parentheses on both things. Okay, so now we're going to use that property again. Power to power, you'd multiply. So this is 9x plus 1 equals 9 squared times x minus 5. So those are being multiplied. And we have to distribute. So we're going to take this 2 into both terms. And we would get 9x plus 1 on the left equals nine to the two X minus 10 on the right. And now that the bases match, we can equate the exponents and we will get X plus one equals two X minus 10. Let's move all of our X's to one side and all of our numbers to the other side. So let's subtract X from both sides. That'll move the X's to the right, which means I have to move the numbers to the left. So let's add 10 to both sides. X's will cancel. 1 and 10 will become 11. Equal sign will drop down. 2X take away 1X will leave 1X left over. 10's will cancel. So X must equal 11. Solve that one. Okay, for 41, we are going to use a logarithm property and we saw this a few lessons ago maybe the last lesson even and that was if I have the log base b of some number m raised to the x this is actually I think I use p for power I'm going to use the same thing so raised to some power p this is equal to p times the log base b of x so what we had discovered was that these powers will come down. So the powers will come down in front. So if I have my x as a power, I wanna, un, I wanna undo that. I wanna get, make it not a power, I wanna bring it down. So we wanna bring this x down, but the only way to do that is to make it a log. So we are going to take the log of both sides. So we're gonna say log, and let's make it base 10, so I don't have to write any base. I'll just leave it log, L-O-G, which is base 10, 17 to the X. Now, if I take a log to the left side, I must take a log of the right side. Okay, and now this X will come down. So what we get is X times the log of 17 equals the log of 83. Now these are being multiplied. So to undo the multiplication of log 17, we will divide both sides by log 17. 
and we will get just x on the left equals log 83 over log 17. Now any base will work. So um, if you type in ln, so that's another button on your calculator, you will get the exact same answer. So log base 10, ln base e, they'll both provide the same answer. In fact, the numbers you should get for this one, just so you can make sure you can get this on your calculator, should be 1.91908 on top and 1.23045. For the bottom, and when you divide those two numbers, you should get the final answer, or not quite the final answer, the unrounded answer, 1.5596. Okay, now this one though, it wants you to write the logarithm answer, so in here you're going to type, in your homework, you'll type log 83 divided by log 17. So that is the exact answer they want for that blank. Now for this blank, they want the decimal number rounded to two decimal places. So to round that number, we'll stand on the second decimal place, look to the right, okay, it's five or bigger, so we'll plus this by one and call it 1.56. And you can test this if you take 17 raised to the 1.56 on your calculator, you will get approximately 83.08. So very close to that 83 that we were looking for. Okay, so that's using our power rule that we had learned maybe a lesson or two ago. Okay, in 42, it's going to be another property. And this one, um, we, we might not have seen yet. So let's write what this one would be. So I think we, we did see this one. So this is one we saw, if you have log base B of b raised to the x, that's just equal to x. Well, it also works this way. If you have base b raised to the log base b of x, that is also just equal to x. So what happens is these bases and these logs are kind of, uh, they undo each other, right? So the log base b of b of x, the log b b cancel, and you're just left with x b log b of x, the b log b also cancels and you're just left with x. So if we have log 5x, I want to get rid of that log 5. To get rid of the log 5, we are going to make each side an exponent on base 5. So I made the left hand side an exponent of the base 5. But if I made the left side an exponent of base 5, we have to make the right-hand side an exponent of base 5. So that's not 2 on the right anymore. It's 5 raised to the 2. Okay. And now, very similar to what we saw before, uh, once we have the bases match, we can do our arithmetic. Now, on the left, 5 log 5 will cancel. The x will drop down. And you're left with x equals 5 squared, which is, well, I'll write this, x equals 5 squared, or x equals 25. So the solution to this is 25. Another way to do this, so there's another way to see this, and this is, goes back to when I first introduced logarithms. If you have log base b x equal y, you can rewrite that as x equal base to the y. So we had seen that early, early on, just transforming between logs and bases. So you can do that in this problem, and you'll get the same result if you just match up. Okay, b is 5, y is 2, x is x, and you can solve it. Okay, in 43, it's very, very similar. So um, we are going to just take each side and make it a exponent on base 5. And the 5 log 5 on the left will cancel. The x plus 2 will drop down. So the left becomes x plus 2. The right becomes 5 squared and our log is gone, and we're just dealing with base 5 now. Well, since the log is gone, the x plus 2, I don't need those parentheses anymore. So we can write x plus 2 equals 25, subtract 2 from both sides, 
x is 23. So if we can do 42, 43 is a breeze. Okay, 44, there is one slight trick we need before we can proceed. And it's basically using this property right here, log b d x equals x. Well, if the power is 1, so log b b no power, then that equals 1. So this is a subset of this more general principle. If the log is of a number that matches the base, then the it collapses into the exponent. Well, if there is no exponent, then there's an understood 1 as the exponent. So we're going to notice that on this one, log 5, 5, there's an understood 1 right there. So this whole thing is going to collapse and just become 1. So this whole thing will become 1. So what we have on the left is 2 log base 5 of x plus 1. On the right, we have 1 plus 1, which is 2. Now we can say, okay, this 2 is being multiplied. So to get rid of it, divide by 2. But if I divide the left by 2, I have to divide the right by 2. The left, we are left with log 5, x plus 1. And on the right, 2 divided by 2 is just 1. Okay, now we'll do our trick. This is base 5, so make this an exponent of base 5, which means I have to make this an exponent of base 5. The 5 and 5 will cancel. The x plus 1 will drop down. And we have x plus 1, I don't need the parentheses anymore, equals 5 to the first. Any number to the first power is itself. Subtract 1 from both sides, x equals 4. Okay, so just added that um, idea that log bb with no exponent is just 1. Okay, in 45, we're going to need another thing that we have seen before, but let's get it up here so we can have it handy. That is if you have two logs separated by a plus sign, you can make them into one log where the two things are being multiplied. So two logs separated by a plus will become one log of those two things being multiplied. So we had seen that at the end of the last section. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave the left side as it is. Log 6x minus 6 equals the right side we're going to change into log of x plus 3 times 7. And we tend to put a parentheses around the whole thing. So notice how I condense those two into one by multiplying the two arguments of each log. Okay, and now, now and only now, can we do that trick. So if there's no log, it's base 10. So we're going to make this base 10, this base 10. If I do that, the 10 log 10 will cancel, the 10 log 10 will cancel. And all we're left with is 6x minus 6 has to equal x plus 3 times 7. And this is the sort of problem we could have solved from uh, week 1. But let's go through it. Distribute this 7. And we will get 6x minus 6 on the left, 7x plus 21 on the right. Let's move all the x's to the right side where there's more of them. Let's move the numbers to the left side. And we'll get 6x's cancel. Negative 6 minus 21 will be negative 27. Equal sign will drop down. Oh, I forgot a step here. If I'm subtracting 6x from the left, I have to subtract 6x from the right. And we'll get 7 take away 6x is 1x. 21 take away 21 is 0. So x must equal negative 27. Okay, but, and we should have been checking this all along, although all the previous ones would be fine. You have to be careful about negative numbers. Because if you recall, 
we had stated that if you have the log of any base of x, that x must be bigger than 0. And we had gone through that. Basically, you can't take a number to a power and get a negative number out. So even negative powers give you positive numbers. So we can't allow negatives to go into the logarithm. So in fact, if you plug in negative 27 into either of these, but let's just go with the easy one. Plug in negative 27 here. You'll get log negative 27 plus 3, which is log negative 24. And I encourage you to try that on your calculator. Type in log negative 24. You will get an error. You might, your calculator might even say domain error, which would be even better if it did, because you can't have negative numbers. So this one, there's no solution. We did our arithmetic correctly. We did our algebra. It says for this to balance, x must be negative 27, but you can't have a negative 27 for that logarithm, so there is no solution. Okay, for 46, it's very similar. We are going to combine this left side. So we've got two logs being added. So the first thing we're going to do is write that as one log, base 10 now, of x times x minus 5. That's going to equal log 36. Now, because I have log equals log, only when you have that can you do this part. Now that I have log equals log, I can make them both base 10s. And that will cancel 10 log 10, 10 log 10 will cancel. And now we are left with x times x minus 5 equals 36. And we will distribute the x. And we will get x squared minus 5x equals 36. Subtract 36 from both sides. And we'll make that equal to 0. Now to solve this, you can use quadratic formula. It's a quadratic equation. Or you can factor, which is preferred. So look for the factors of negative 36 that add up to negative 5. And if you think about it, you will see that negative 9 and positive 4 will work. So minus 9 times 4 is negative 36. Minus 9 plus 4 is negative 5. Now this has two solutions, when x is positive 9 or negative 4. But we're going to be careful of negative numbers. In fact, if you try negative 4 in that log, the very first one, we will get an error. So we are going to throw away that negative 4 answer. So the only answer for this one that will work is x equal to 9. This one's not no solution. There is one solution. A quadratic equation says we should get two solutions because it's x squared, but one of them doesn't work for the domain, for the logarithm. For 47, we are going to add another property in, and that is if we have two logs being subtracted. So ln and log, they're the same idea. So all these properties I'm writing, they can also work for ln. Just replace LOG with LN, it's the same properties, um, just different base. So I'm going to write it with LOG. So if I have LOG base B of M minus LOG base B of N, that's equal to the log base B of M divided by N. So addition becomes multiplication. Subtraction becomes division. So we're going to do this in two chunks. We've got these two being subtracted. So I'm going to combine both of those into 1ln, where we have x minus 2 on top and x plus 5 on the bottom. Then on the right-hand side, we're going to do the same thing. Two lns being subtracted will become 1ln with the first thing on top and the thing being subtracted on the bottom. Okay, now ln is base e. So we're going to make these base e's and base e's. And 
we can write this up here next to log. So if you have the natural log of e to the x, that's just equal to x. Or if you have e to the natural log of x, that's just x. So we can add those two to the list. So if we take e to the natural log of something, the e and the natural log will cancel, and you're just left with these fractions. So we're going to have x minus 2 over x plus 5 equals x minus 1 over x plus 10. Now to solve this, we are going to cross multiply. So we will get, let me do this up here, x minus 2 times x plus 10 equals x minus 1 times x plus 5. And now we have to FOIL. So first would give us x squared. Outer would give us plus 10x. Inner would give us minus 2x. And last would give us minus 2 times 10, minus 20. This side first would be x squared. Outer would be plus 5x. Inner would be minus 1x. And last would be minus 1 times 5, minus 5. OK. <clears throat> We have 1x squared on the left, 1x squared on the right. We can subtract x squared from both sides, and we will get these to cancel. The middle terms will be 10x minus 2x, which is 8x, then minus 20. The right will be 5x minus 1x, which is 4x minus 5. And now we can subtract 4x from both sides. Add 20 to both sides. 4x on the left, 20s cancel. Equal sign drops down. 4x's cancel. 20 minus 5, 15. That is being multiplied. To get rid of it, divide by 4, divide by 4. 1x is 15 fourths. And it's not negative, so we don't have to be too worried about it. Actually, in this one, you should check this because in subtracting, so since we have subtraction in two of these, this one and this one, it might actually be a negative number. So let's see, what would this be? If x is 15 over 4, let's make 2 8 over 4. This would equal 7 over 4 positive, so that one's going to be okay. The positive ones we don't have to check because it's just going to be more positive. Let's try this one. This one. 15 over 4 minus 4 over 4 would be 11 over 4 positive, so it's going to work. So this one, it's not going to cause any of those natural logs to be negative, so it should work just fine. And that would be the solution. Okay, the last problem in this section, 48. It's um, actually one we could have done earlier. It's just creating base 5. So we have 5x squared minus 12 equals 5 squared to the 2x. So we're just changing 25 to 5 squared. We want those bases to match. Now we have to know power to a power. You multiply those two. So it's 5x squared minus 12 equals 5 to the 4x. 2 times 2, 4 with an x on it. Now that these two bases match, we can just equate the exponents. So we will say x squared minus 12 has to equal 4x. Subtract 4x from both sides. x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals 0. This one can also factor into negative 6, positive 2. So those two numbers multiply to be negative 12. They add to be negative 4. This has two solutions, x equals 6 and x equals negative 2. Now, 
there is no domain restriction on a power. So if I have x to a power, um, that p can be any real number. So be careful. We did restrict negatives in logs. Okay, you can't have a negative for a log, but for a power base, it's not uh, it's not a problem at all. So this minus two is going to be fine. So our answer is six and negative two. And that would conclude section four dot four.